Thanks for clicking. China certainly made a lot of news this week as disinformation over a potential military coup against President Xi Jinping spread all over social media. The rumor turned out to be just that, rumor, and President Xi turned up on state TV just a few days later. However, we did receive some reliable news that the state is stepping in to help Evergrande complete some of its projects, after the developer had pledged to have all of its projects resumed by the end of September. Somebody help me! We also received news of other potential government support in the real estate sector, as it was announced that total support could reach $501 billion. And finally, China's mortgage boycotts continued to heat up this week, with protesters expanding their list of reasons for non-payment. With China's 20th Party Congress just a few weeks away, an increase in social disruption is not exactly what the doctor ordered. So what I want to do today is briefly look at state intervention to help out Evergrande, take a look at the extent of intervention that might be required to save the real estate sector, and then take a look at the spreading mortgage boycotts. China's 20th Party Congress is just a few weeks away, which is widely expected to return President Xi Jinping to a third term in power. We'll continue to have updates out on China's real estate crisis on its economy in anticipation of that meeting. Click like and subscribe to get those updates, but for now, let's get into Grant. On to Evergrande. If you remember from a few weeks ago, the troubled real estate developer assured investors, assured China that they would resume all of their real estate projects in China by the end of September. However, it was reported this week that Evergrande has been instructed by Shenzhen authorities to allow the state to intervene and work with its state-backed firm to resume construction on four of its real estate projects. Evergrande and the state-owned firm issued a statement saying the firm will help with construction to ensure the delivery of homes to its buyers. While Evergrande had promised to resume all of the construction of its homes itself, Clearly, this is not the case and the state is intervening. The government stepping in to help Evergrande finish its projects doesn't really change the state of China's real estate crisis, beyond further demonstrating that Evergrande cannot function on its own. Right. However, what it does demonstrate is that things work different in China. One of the biggest issues in 2008 was that the Treasury Department was unable to direct the banks to act how they wanted. They couldn't get the banks to cooperate, to come up with a plan to save the economy. China doesn't have this problem. China can direct its firms as it likes. I'm what counts out here. This tool available to China, which is not available to many democratic governments, may very well help them as they attempt to orchestrate a bailout of the worsening real estate sector. Speaking of 2008, it was reported this week that total bailout funds for the real estate sector could reach as high as $501 billion. While the S&P has estimated that total bailout funds thus far has reached 700 to 800 billion won, or $100 billion, the CSLA came out with an estimate this week that total funds to bail out the real estate sector to complete these projects could reach $500 billion. The S&P reiterated this week that given the extent of the crisis, given the extent of the downturn, the government might be finally feeling the need to intervene definitively. Indeed, speaking of the downturn, the mortgage boycotts that we've talked about so much on this channel, which now comprise at least 343 projects as of mid-September, continue to expand their list of reasons for non-payment of mortgages. Well, initially, the boycotts were targeted at those home builders which failed to deliver on their projects. We found out this week that even homeowners who have received their units are boycotting, citing poor construction and noise pollution. France 24 conducted some interviews in China looking at the extent of the damage of these home projects. Right now, the work is unfinished. Look, there are still tools, potty, floorboards. Everything was just left like this. It's like this inside some of the flats. And these were the homeowners that did receive their projects from this troubled real estate sector. Many homeowners haven't received their projects yet, and it's been years. Could drag on for another eight years, even ten. In Kunming, some buildings have not been delivered even after a decade. Yeah, I don't think you or I would want to make our mortgage payments either. So, from false coup rumors, to having to step in yet again to bail out Evergrande, to news that, that bailout funds could hit $500 billion, and spreading mortgage boycotts, we had yet another not great week for President Xi Jinping ahead of this 20th Party Congress, which is his main focus right now. While it was reported this week that the price tag to complete these finished projects to bail out this real estate sector 
could hit $500 billion, it was not reported that China had committed to do so. As we've seen for the past year on this channel, China is taking a wait and see band-aid approach to this real estate crisis without coming up with an all-encompassing solution. And as we've also seen thus far, it isn't working. With the crisis continuing to heat up, with developers continuing to need help, and with these mortgage boycotts spreading. Whether or not Beijing will step up in the lead up to the 20th Party Congress, or maybe even thereafter, remains to be seen. We'll obviously have updates out on Beijing's actions in the Chinese economy and the Chinese real estate sector on this channel every Friday. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates, but for now, thanks so much for watching.